What's going on, everybody? Paul Hickey here with NoOffSeason.com. I am at The National, and this is a special episode of the Sports Card Strategy. We're going to call it Sports Card Strategy Show and Tell special episode from The National. I am here with my main man. I think I always say, like, my main man on the show, and then I say, like, Lefty or Chad or whatever, but I don't think they're the main men anymore. I think Tim Larson, <laughs> Tim Larson with Signs of the Times Collectibles is the one and only main man because, Tim, not only are you just as good, if not better, of a guy as Lefty and Chad, but you've invited me into your booth, booth 3216. And I got to say... I'm pumped to be here. It's good to see you. How you doing, man? Yeah, me too. No, I think it's going to be a great week. I remember, I don't know how long it, ago it was that you had mentioned that on one of your episodes that, you know, if anybody had a space that you could crash into. And I thought, you know what? I've got this big booth, uh, going to use maybe half of it. And I think that would be a lot of fun. And I think our booths turned out to be set up pretty nicely. Um, yeah, looking forward to a great week. Yeah, it's all come together. I mean, I think I said something, I'm going to guess January or February, about, hey, I want to go to the National. I'll be at the National. Um, and then you reached out and said, hey, let's uh, let's talk shop, see if we can work something out where you come in, come into the booth. And I got to say, your stuff's awesome. I'm well, just trying to keep up with you. Yeah, well, that's what's nice, too, is we're not – not that I wouldn't have invited you to share my booth anyway, but we're not competing against each other. You're doing your slab cracking and your your content, and and I'm peddling uh, collectibles and looking to buy, and and so I think it's a good it's a good mix. And and the other thing I told you, Paul, if you recall, and I've told you this more than once, it was a deal with no strings attached. You know, yeah. I wasn't looking for anything. I mean, anything that comes of this is going to be a bonus. Um, the fact that I'm doing this with you now is a bonus. Um, so I, I'm just looking forward to a fun week and a lot of activity in our booth. Yeah, same here, man. Yeah. Same here. It's going to be great. Um, so we're doing this content really for the listeners that won't be able to make it to the national. So shout out to everybody in the No Off Season family, Sports Card Strategy Show family who can't make it to the national. We love you, and hopefully we'll see you in another show in real life at some point. Um, but also, many of you in the NoOffSeason.com family will be here, so be sure to check us out at booth 3216. Get your slabs cracked. Um, and and Tim is not peddling collectibles. He's being very, very humble. The, the level of collectibles that he has at this booth is, is just as good, if not better, than you, what you will see um, in the remainder of the show. Now, this show, a couple things... Uh, well, before we get into the show, Tim, and going through what we're going to kind of have you tell us about and show us in this special edition of the Sports Card Strategy Show and Tell, tell us a little bit more about yourself, your, you know, how you got into um, doing what you're doing now, and, uh, and um, yeah, tell us about your business right now, and then we will get into the show and the items that you have here in the booth and um tim is hopefully can hear in both his right and left <laughs> ear after stepping on the uh oh boy on the headphones yes. it's okay tim stepped on the headphones and it unplugged his headphones which is it probably felt like a much bigger deal than it was to tim uh. it was not a big deal i will say um that's probably the second uh embarrassing moment that we've had here at the booth today we've only been here for a few hours the first embarrassing moment was me trying to set up this flipping banner behind us i mean it was ridiculous i i felt like the most useless human being on the face of the planet trying to it literally took me going through two different banner stands one of which tim so kindly brought from his house for me uh, in Iowa here here to Chicago to Rosemont. Okay, so Tim's back. I yeah, think you can and, hear out of his red and left and, ear and, now. And before I let you go with that, um, you invited, or I actually uh, offered my services to help you with the banner and then proceeded <laughs> to tell down. you, well, proceeded to tell you that 
I didn't know how to do it any more than you. Yeah, did, that was great. So, that was great. Uh, we're we're bonding here because yeah. Tim and I are very similar with apparently with spatial awareness because yeah. he said, "Paul, can I help you set anything up?" I'm like, "No, no, I got it. I got it." Well, of course, I didn't have it. I tried it, and then I wasn't getting it, and so then I came back over to Tim and said, "You know what? I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna take you up on that offer." And he goes, "Well, actually, I was just only talking about I could hold something for you." <laughs> I'm like, "Okay, yeah. that's cool." No, so yeah, just a little bit about me and kind of how I get got started in collectibles. So, uh, the town I grew up uh, in Central Iowa had a, a sprint car racing track, and and Dad used to haul us kids there on Saturday nights. And and in the early '70s, collecting beer cans was kind of a fad. And and of course, there were car drivers and their crews coming from all over the United States and. And obviously, after the races, they like to partake in their favorite beverage. And a lot of those cans ended up around the pits. And so we started picking up cans. And uh, actually, I did. And my brother and dad started getting interested in that. And so uh, one thing led to another. And and we all kind of had the beer can collecting bug. And dad would haul my brother and uh, I around to shows. And we attended our first beer convention it's not a convention it's a can convention we attended our first convention in des moines iowa in 1975 and then uh my brother actually has two degrees um, he has an undergraduate degree in business and a, and a master's in business administration and yet selling beer cans has been the only job he's ever had i love that i'm so jealous um, he's made a really good living um, selling something that was meant to be thrown in a trash can and like many collectibles like sports cards in particular here at the national beer can collecting and 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 rare older beer cans are red hot and selling for more now than ever um, so i actually started collecting cards about the same time i bought my first pack of tops baseball in 1971 at the red owl grocery store uh, in bismarck north dakota when visiting my grandparents and so i was hooked on on collecting cards and you know, my story's not different than, than many. Um, collected through probably junior high and early high school, and then that gave way to high school activities and, and then college and then uh, cars and girls and, and then a wife and family. But probably in my late 20s, early 30s, I started picking up the beer can collecting again and then started branching out into other collectibles, you know, vintage advertising, old signage, um, comic books, um, you know, obviously beer cans, uh, sports cards and memorabilia, autograph pieces. So really anything old, um, you know, kind of prior to the 80s when people started bringing in all kinds of you know, limited edition, you know, collectibles and everybody kept those. Obviously the stuff that I'm talking about are things that were often used, looked at, played with, and discarded. And so that's where uh, the uniqueness and the value of some of those pieces come from. Very cool. Very cool story. And um, I think it, it kind of explains why what you're showing at the National here, I could hold up against any other booth. I just walked around the entire show after setting up, and it's about 20 times larger than it was last year in Atlantic City. It's about 20, I'm not even kidding you, it's about 20 times larger. Wow. It's like, it's, it's amazing. And so um, there's a lot of great stuff out there, but Signs of the Times collectibles at booth 3216 definitely has some stuff that I would stack up against anyone. So let's get into that. Let's yeah, get into that. This sure. is some cool stuff. So tell us about these LeBron and Russell Westbrook upper deck dual cards what's this what give us an overview of the card and then the story behind it because it's pretty cool it is pretty cool i think they are from it's obviously not any kind of a rookie thing i think it was meant to show where i think the patch on that shows ucla where russell went to college and of course lebron didn't go to college yep so it has his is it saint mary's where he went to High school, yep. um, a Catholic school, maybe yeah, well, in I know, Akron. I know, I know their mascot is the Irish, okay. so I don't know what uh, what school that was. I probably should, but I don't know. But the Irish. Yeah, so it has you know kind of his high school patch on there, and then I think it was about 2011. Uh, Upper Deck had created this booklet, and 
LeBron signed his 25. They're numbered at 25, and I think the the booklets then in the box were shipped to uh, Russell Westbrook, and and coincidentally his contract with Upper Deck had expired, and so he didn't sign them. And I think they ended up in the hands. The story goes of his brother, and his brother had peddled them, and I ended up at a show in Kansas City a couple years ago, and ended up buying eight of them, and I think I've sold all but two. And some Very guys cool. said, you know, it'd be nice if they could track Russell down someday and have him sign, you know, his his signature there in gold. And uh, so, no, it's kind of a unique thing. I still have the box yeah. from Upper Deck that has, you know, all the information on it too. So, yeah. Was there was there something behind a a family member of Russell Westbrook that helped you acquire those cards, or did I, am I making that up? No, well, his brother ended up with them. Okay, that's what and I thought. so when I was at the show in Kansas City, somebody from Oklahoma City, and that's where Russell was at the time with the Oklahoma City Thunder, um, somebody had made a deal with Russell's brother and then ended up bringing him to the show in Kansas City from Oklahoma City. So, so these are not signed by Russell, but they're sibling-held Russell Westbrook cards signed by LeBron James. Correct. Very interesting. Yeah. I like that. Okay, so in the same showcase here, we have some CSG slabs. Now, tell us real quick about why have you submitted so many cards over the years to CSG? You said you've submitted quite a few, right? I have. How, how many? Yeah, over 10,000. Wow. Um, so long story short on that, um, you know, my background was education. You know, I was a teacher and coach and elementary school principal for, gosh, 27 years. And then a friend of mine owned a, a banking group in the Midwest, and he and his father, and he asked if I would be interested in coming to work for them. And so I thought, hey, I'll give that a shot. I did that for about seven years, really enjoyed that. But as I was doing that, that, that role, I had continued to pedal. I say pedal. I, I continued I like to it. deal like in, in vintage collectibles. And through my brother, met my current partner, and he was the CEO of one of the larger gold and silver companies in the world. And it's called Asset Marketing Services. They're based in, in Egan, Minnesota. And they have offices in Shanghai and Hong Kong uh, and Sarasota, Florida. And so a couple of years ago, we started kicking around the idea of building out a collectibles division. So I quit my banking gig, went to work for him, started building out Collectors Limited. And that's gone real well, other than when I was at the Met Collective with you, not yeah. with you, but you were there and we didn't know each other then. Yeah. When I was at the Met Collective in Vegas back in the spring, we hired a new CEO and he made the decision to move a different direction and focus on the coins. So as of the end of the year, Collectors Limited will be no more. So I'm going to run with my Signs of the Times brand that I've held since 2015 and continue to build that out. So. The warehouse that we have down in Sarasota is actually, we lease that from CSG. MGC okay. grades our coins, CSG grades our cards, CGC grades our comics. I actually, Jameson, my son, is with me, and my two older boys are coming on Saturday. But my, my partner, the former CEO of Asset, that I'm really good friends with right now, actually landed his Learjet about five minutes from my house and I hopped on that with my son Jameson on his birthday amazing and took three long boxes of comic books to CGC and went through those with the president of CGC and they're gonna be graded so you know while collectors limited was being built out we thought we had such a great relationship with NGC on the coin side that we would develop that kind of relationship on the card side so as I was building out Collectors Limited, um, I did send, as you mentioned, uh, a number of cards, probably closer to 12,000 to CSG to get wow. graded. Yeah. You versus Chad Gill. Chad, PSA submission, Tim Larson, CSG submission. I think you you might have him there. Yeah. That's well, going to be hard to beat. Yeah. We'll it's have to ask cards. him. Okay, so C- CSG slabs, tell us about the, the uh, star... Bulls cards because that's okay. really cool. 
Sure. So my partner now, uh, the former CEO, I'll just refer, him, refer to him in, in the future as my partner because he is my business partner. We bought a comic book collection together in St. Louis, and uh, that's what my son and I took down to uh, CGC recently. But he had acquired, there was a, a fairly significant memorabilia collection that was held by the Chicago Bulls. And I think many of you have seen a lot of those items come up for sale. I think Sotheby's just handled some of the shoes. I think there were six pairs of shoes that Jordan wore in the clinching six games of each of his finals. And they were on display at the National last year in Atlantic City and C CSG's uh -huh. booth. I don't remember if you saw those. Yeah, yeah I remember those. Uh, but those came out of this collection that I'm referring to, and there's quite a bit of pieces that we're still interested in, in getting our, you know, our mitts on. But there were these cards, and I actually have the letter on my booth, displayed on my booth, but there were cards that Top sent the Chicago Bulls in the 90s and asked them, to have the players hand these cards out to fans. And so many of the cards are uh, obviously Scottie Pippen, uh, Dennis Rodman, and of course Michael Jordan. And so what we've done, we're calling it, we've worked with C CSG on this. It's called the Locker Room Collection. And we ended up with about 3,000 cards that the Bulls players didn't hand out along with the letter that Topps sent to the Chicago Bulls and we've encapsulated those and numbered those accordingly and so we're still trying to figure out how to market yeah. and sell those at some point um, but I brought some of the cards along you know just you know along with the letter from Topps to, to share with the, the folks here at the National. I'm hoping some of our audience members are interested in some of these cards they're really cool um, these are cards that the players had in their possession and they could have passed them out in their sphere, but uh, instead they did not and they went back to the Bulls and then now they're at, some of them are at Signs of the Times collectibles, so pretty cool. All right, I saw a couple wrestling slabs there. I don't know if you want to talk about Hulk and Andre the Giant or if we pass those guys. No, and that's fine. I, I you know, of course, I like wrestling. I, you know, probably... Like some parents feel the need to tell their kids that Santa Claus isn't real, uh, I felt the need to tell my four boys growing up that wrestling wasn't real. And but it is real entertainment, right? And it, and it is fun to watch. And and also I'll mention this real quickly: growing up in in Central Iowa, uh, my grandfather that I mentioned that lived in Bismarck, North Dakota, he had two nephews. That one, his name was Jack Patera. He was a defensive line coach for the Minnesota Vikings in the 70s, and so he would send me pictures and autographs and stickers and cards of the players. And so to this day, that's why I'm a Minnesota Vikings fan. He went on to be the first head coach of the Seattle Seahawks in 1980, cool. and so one of my kids is a Seahawks fan. His other nephew was named Ken Patera. Ken was... Uh, an Olympic weightlifter and an all-star wrestler too. And he actually has a card that I own that was in that wrestling all-star set that Hulk Hogan's supposed rookie card is. I think it's 1982-83. So when I was at that show in Kansas City, when I picked, that's why it's important to go to shows, guys, because you never know what you're going to find. Yeah, for sure. You never know what connections you're going to make. So I was buying my grandpa's nephew, Ken, or Ken Patera at a booth and I got talking to the the older gentleman and he happened to be the gentleman that I just went down to St. Louis and picked up the 20,000 comic book collection from. okay so you just never know small world yeah so very that's, cool those are two cards that I got from him and uh, obviously I'm in the mindset of you know everything's for sale I do have some things in my safe at home that I like but if the price was right, I'd, I'd sell, too. So. Everything's for sale. Yeah. I love it. Um, Steph Curry signed patch in there. There's a Jordan Love SGC auto. Uh, and then let here, here's one I'm interested. This is near and dear to my heart, of course. We have some plays that you've made because uh. you are, of course, one of our favorite listeners of the Sports Card Strategy Show. And... Of course, everybody knows that we've been talking about cracking some slabs, baby. So I was leading up to this one. CSG, 
He's he's submitted over 12,000 cars to CSG. 2023 is the first year he started cracking them and submitting them to PSA because of the Sports Card Strategy Show. So talk to us, Tim, about some of these plays you've made here, man. We've got some Jalen Hurts, some Lamar Jackson. You're making some money, man. You sold one of the Hurts today. I did. Um, yeah, it was actually, it's, it's, it, it's a, everything you said is true, Paul. I'm sure everything you always say is true because you <laughs> seem like a very honest guy. Thank, thank you, sir. But up until... Um, I don't remember when I first listened to you guys talk about cracking slabs, but up until that point, I had never done that. Yeah, interesting. And, and so having submitted so many CSG uh, or cards to CSG and knowing what's in those nine slabs, I've just felt for the longest time that there are a lot of those cards that if you cracked and submitted to another grading company that... I don't want to say more than likely, but there was a good chance that they would be 10. So after that show, uh, I got out my cracking tools and cracked uh, three Jalen Hurts cards and one Lamar Jackson card, sent them to PSA, and they all came back 10. That's amazing. And they were all nines. They were all nines. They were all CSG nines, everybody, and they in came the, back PSA 10s. In the, in the early green slab. Amazing. And I'm yeah, so I, happy when our audience makes money. And you know what? I, I think I'll 10x. Yeah, I was gonna say. So what tell I us. Paid for those. Tell us just roughly. You don't yeah. have to give us the exact numbers, but tell us roughly what you paid for the Hertz that you sold today. I paid fifty dollars. Uh huh. Um, I think I paid fifteen dollars to have it graded plus the shipping, and I sold it for four hundred and twenty-five dollars. There you go. Love it. And you sold it in person. So yeah. for those of you who are worried about obviously tax and shipping and yeah, fees. Save the fees and save the, uh, yeah. Well done. Yeah. Okay, so then in in the showcase still, you have a Hertz green velocity optic rated rookie that came back a PSA 10. You have a Hertz laser prism. These are 2020, by the way. Laser prism that came back a PSA 10. You also have a Lamar Jackson tri-color select 2018 rookie out of 99 that came back a PSA 10 that was a CSG 9. So you're going to make some more money. And I think I paid $100 for that card yeah. in the last PSA 10 so for $1,200. Let's 12x, baby. Let's 12x. Bingo. Let's do it. Yeah. Okay, cool. So I'm sure we'll have an update from Tim in a future episode on what he sold those cards for at the National. But um, we'll keep moving along because there were some other cards that caught my eye here with and a couple of them have a cool cool story so just a basic uh, so for those of you who are walking around the national or you're curious what's at the national I will tell you there's a good amount of booths that have rare items that you've never seen before but then there's a there's probably equally as many booths that have Joe Burrow and Jalen Hurts contenders rookie ticket autos Tim has those as you can see here. But then he also has a card that has a little bit of a cool story behind it from today, a Shohei Otani Topps Inception 2018. This would be a rookie patch auto technically. It's out of 10. Tim, this is an amazing card. And t tell us about this card. It is, it's numbered uh, to 10. It's one of 10. And so it's hard to find, you know, a comparable. So it's hard to price. And, you know, I'm kind of kicking around, maybe throwing it in an auction, maybe throwing it in one of the bigger auction houses and just kind of letting it go for what it goes for. Somebody asked me this morning, he said, what would you want for that card? I said, I at least 15000 And the guy said, well, I designed that card. And I'm <laughs> yes. like, what? He said, yeah, I worked for Tops for 20 years. And he said, I did all the inceptions. And then he said, um, you know, through the merger, when Fanatics bought him, yep. he said he ended up getting kind of caught up in the corporate backwash and lost his position. And he said, and I didn't think of it until he said it, but he said, if you look at what's the card that looks almost exactly like it, I'll think of it here in a second, because I know that Mahomes has some, some rookie cards too that look almost exactly like it. And he said they kind of copied his design. There we and, go. And went with that. But again, 
that's the benefit of being at a show is yeah. you meet people like that. You know, you love to hear the stories. And here's another tip that I'll give the viewers, Paul, is years ago when I'd go to a show, I'd get home and I'd look at my bottom line and determine whether or not it was a successful yeah, show yeah. or not. How, yeah. How, how did much did I make? Yeah. And as I've gotten older and hopefully a little wiser, I realize there's more to it than that. There's what we're doing right now, Absolutely. the friendship that we're creating. I get to bring one of my kids with me. I have two more of my kids coming. We're going to go out for dinner. They're going to enjoy the national as they have the last couple of years. There's going to be connections made, just like some of the stories I've already told. You won't know until weeks or months later what being at a show produces. Absolutely. Because somebody grabbed one of your business cards and calls you and says, my grandpa has a whole building of old beer cans. Are you interested yeah. in them? Which, had I not been here, that obviously wouldn't have happened. Yeah, that's a great point. Yeah. That's a great point. I hope for your sake that that happens because I know you're looking to buy some more cool stuff. Yeah. Um, speaking of cool stuff, you got some Kobe rookies in there, but then there's also some F1 autos. Tell us about those. Yeah, so here, I don't know, it's probably been three years now. I have an acquaintance that lives in Hungary. He's actually a nuclear engineer, so he's probably fairly sharp. So he probably could have put the banner together. He could have put the I... banner together, yeah. I'm okay. guessing. Although sometimes the people that are really smart <laughs> don't have common <laughs> sense. Be like, I'll just hold it for yeah. you. <laughs> <laughs> so, so he's a this gentleman in Hungary is a, a freelance writer for F1, kind of on the side. So, and so he ends up attending six to eight races in Europe during the summer sometimes with his son and then has access to all these drivers so over the last couple of years i've been primarily able to pick up the max verstappens and the lewis hamiltons and the charles leclerc um, those are kind of my my go-to's um, carlos Sainz, i like to but um, yeah autographed tickets autographed you know kind of the four by ten uh, driver stats cards um, yeah, just kind of an eclectic mix there, and you don't see that. Very you don't often. see that. I was just going to yeah. say, this is something for people who are into F1 that they need to come check this out. Yeah. Like, if you're into F1 at all, I would think people would want those yeah. more than the cars. It's super cool. It's really cool. Yeah. So, the autograph authentication comes with it. Is that what I'm seeing on the back here? It is. Yeah, yeah there's a couple different companies. I had some of those with me in Atlantic City last year in JSA authenticated some of them and then another gentleman that used to work for upper deck has a company on the west coast he's authenticated those and uh, and you've got pictures with the dude with the driver who got the autos i mean yeah. this is legit stuff yeah really yeah cool. and i tried to tell that story too so when people go to buy it yeah it has an authentication but then i can say hey this is the gentleman that i'm getting these from kind of tell the story you know, piece it all together, which I did with JSA too. And they said it was very helpful to yeah. see the pictures and hear the story and Absolutely. be able to, okay, you, you don't know where you got them. Yeah, it's not some dude you in know. his basement like, yeah, copying them. and mad yeah. Sharpie, and, you know. <laughs> exactly. So. We know they're legit, so you got to come check them out. Yeah. And hopefully for those of you who can't make it, if you want to. Tim, if you want to, um, if people want to contact you, what's the best way to do that if they can't make it to the show, but they're... Uh, you know, yeah, do you want me to get my email address? throw out the email on yeah, the air. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Yeah, it's T. Larson, T-L-A-R-S-E-N, good Dane there, 65 at gmail.com. Perfect. And we got to get you. Here's what we're going to do. We'll talk about this off air in the next couple of weeks when we after we re recover from the national. Yeah. When I contact you, I'm going to say, okay, if I were to build you a website, yeah. would that be of benefit for oh, you? Oh, absolutely. Okay, because I absolutely. think if you're going to move forward with this business, yeah. get you a yeah. T. Larson at Signs of the Times and collectibles email. So we okay. actually, when I reference Collectors Limited, the, the company that I'm continuing to work through the end of the year with, uh, we had a top-notch, first-rate website. Yeah. And we had things in place, and I think it was just something where the new CEO, it was just not a collector yeah um just really wanted to focus on the coins which that business is really strong for them and i get it you know it was business it wasn't nothing personal but uh obviously as much as we've talked just this morning and on the phone you can tell that i'm passionate about collectibles yeah you know it's it's one of those things where it gets in your blood just like sports car collecting but 
I've always had, you know, a passion for older things and learning about them and the stories that you hear. And it's just fun. And it's like, you know, we're spending a whole week doing this. And it's like, I couldn't sleep last night. I know. I was so excited. I could not sleep. And, you know, I'm 57 years old. (laughs) And, you know, I feel like I did when I was six and started picking up, you know, the beer cans for the first time. So that's awesome. I love that, man. I'm the same way. And I'm, I'm super grateful that we get to experience that. So actually, what an amazing segue you just made. There is an item here that hits you from your childhood that you weren't able to buy with your allowance growing up. Tell us about that. Yeah. So I think a lot of what I do, though, and even maybe what a lot of our listeners do, it's it's about nostalgia, too. You can look at things, and it kind of even takes you back to that point where you first saw it, you first owned it. And, and I know a lot of the vintage advertising that I sell and a lot of the comic books, a guy will say, in a pinball. I used to deal a lot in pinball machines, and I sold one to an older gentleman. And he about made me start crying because he goes, I never thought I'd ever play pinball again. Oh, yeah. you know, and he was <laughs> 81 cool. years old, and he bought a pinball machine, and he'd never owned one. And it made me feel really good. That's a great story. So a lot of what I have in my personal collection at home are those things that maybe I couldn't get when I was younger, couldn't afford it. Mom and dad, you know, worked hard and had six kids. But that particular item, Paul, was made in the early 70s by Mattel. And it's called Instant Replay. And the little discs that you see, they made them for you know, football, baseball, basketball, and even like auto racing. And it was all of those stars from that time period. You know, Wilt Chamberlain, uh, Lou Alcindor, obviously Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Uh, it was Ernie Banks. It was Roberto Clemente. And when you pop that little disc in that player, it would have little facts and things and even a little sound clip of them. And I remember one of my friends who was an only child, his parents bought him that. And so I would have to go over to his house yeah. and, and listen to his. So now that I'm older, a collection of those came up and it's like, you know what? I couldn't own one when I was a kid, but now I can afford to buy a whole collection of them. Very cool. So I would absolutely. have been all over those as a kid, oh. all over those. That's awesome. Yeah, um, really is. So, oh, and one thing, thing too, Paul, I'm sorry to interrupt. No, no. One thing I want to mention too, maybe for the younger collectors too, because I think about my kids, you know, I have five kids and my four boys are really into collecting and they all collect something different. Some collect Pokemon, some collect sports cards, some collect comic books. But I think for them, what I see them gravitating toward are things that they have memories of when they were little. Yes. So they're really into... WWE. They're really into Pokemon. They're into video games. Yeah. And wanting to buy those games maybe sealed that they had or couldn't get when they were younger. And I think to some extent it's the same as me. It's 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 that nostalgic aspect of it that's so important. For sure. For sure. And that's an area that uh, we could go into on future episodes of the show because there's going to be probably people that are into all sorts of Harry Potter stuff and, you know, Disney stuff. And this the list goes on and on, which is cool. Actually, um, Marvel Comics, you've got a lot of Marvel Comics over there. That's another area that probably hits people from all generations. Um, on the movies. What I you don't, know, I don't know much about out. that. So t- t- tell us, tell the audience, because we don't talk about comics at all on the Sports Card Strategy Show, but CGC, the comics, that, you know, graded that you have at the booth. Um, just talk about comics. Yeah. So, you know, comics are one of those things, too, that you think about what did a young person do with a comic book when they were reading it? They read it. They, mm-hmm. they stuck it in their back pocket. They put it in their backpack. They beat it up. So to find a comic book from the 50s, 60s, 70s, even 80s that's in good condition is, you know, relatively difficult. So this comic book collection that we purchased um, back in the spring, there were about, you know, 22 to 25,000 books in this collection. And so I have it in a warehouse in central Iowa. And I think I'd mentioned my son and I had taken about 600 books and met with actually the president of CGC. And he specializes in the, in the comic book division. But I think back to what you were kind of referencing, 
there's certain comic books that all of a sudden the prices go up because there's a movie that comes out. Uh-huh. You know, yep. a Hulk movie comes out or a Spider-Man movie comes out. And, and one thing, and I don't know a ton about comics. It's been trial by fire a little bit the last couple of years. But I do know that when there's the first appearance of a character that's often a really valuable and interesting comic book. Like mm-hmm. in this collection, there was a Spider-Man book. I think it's issue 181 that has the first appearance of Wolverine. And all of a sudden, that's a ten, fifteen, twenty thousand yeah, dollar book for sure. Yeah, the X, the X-Men that could not always heal himself. You know, he couldn't get injured because he'd heal himself. Right. Amazing. Love Wolverine. <laughs> um, <laughs> comics, F1 autos. Crack and submit to PSA for profit. Bulls memorabilia from the championship era that were held by the players that are now at Signs of the Times collectibles. The list goes on and on. You've even got your Joe Burrow and your Jalen Hurts rookie ticket autos graded over here. And I even have a... I'm looking at a Larry Bird autographed jersey. Even a Ronald, original Ronald McDonald costume. An original Ronald McDonald costume. I mean, how American is that? When you say original, explain original. How do you, so when you're marketing this item, how do you, what does that mean? So, yeah, let me backtrack just a bit. It may not be the one that, the Ronald McDonald that you saw on the TV commercials in the 70s. Of course, now he's outlawed, isn't he? He's no longer. Yeah, I think he's done. Yeah. Canceled. Uh, but they still have the Ronald McDonald house. Okay. So this costume was made in the early 70s. Uh, you can see the um, uniform company that made it. It's serial numbered. And, and the story goes that in some of the larger cities in the United States, they would have these costumes for special events and birthday parties once in a while. If the parents had the, the wherewithal to rent a Ronald McDonald for their kid's party. Oh. And so my understanding, there were only a handful of these costumes made in the first place. And then a lot of them over the years were probably destroyed. Um, so I just, I look at something like that as true Americana. You yeah. know, it's not for everyone. Yeah. But, you know. It's cool. Yeah. Is there a Magic Johnson autographed jersey over there to accompany Bird? You know, I was always more into Bird, although I know why you like Magic now. And you boy, know why. he was good. And I did wear a pair of Converse like Magic wore back okay. when I was a kid. So okay. I have that connection with Magic. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Um, for those of you who don't know, Irvin Magic Johnson would be the closest thing that I would ever have to a PC. He's my guy. Larry Bird, it's okay. I get why people like Bird. I also get why you like uh, Iowa State and uh, Michigan State. Well, that's, beat Iowa State that's a story for another day. Yeah, we well. I'm going to get Tim's blood boiling here at the end of the episode. Sorry about that. T. Larson with an E. T-L-A-R-S-E-N-6-5 at gmail.com. If you're interested in moving your collection or your items to Tim, he's just a great guy to talk to. He's he's super nice. He's super knowledgeable. He's going to be fair with you. He's in it for the right reasons. And then if you're – or, I mean, I'm sure uh, if you're interested in any of the items that he's selling as well – He'll give you a good deal. He's not looking to get all the money in the world from you. He just wants a good deal. So, yeah, Tim, do you have anything else you want to add well, for this episode? Yeah. So, speaking of, as I'm liquidating some of the items that Collectors Limited actually owns, a lot of this here are my personal items. But I do have a warehouse in Minnesota that has a room with about a half a million cards. If anyone what? is enter, yeah. They're Chad in, Gill might want all well, of them. Well, you know, I would probably make somebody a really good deal, you know, pennies pennies on the dollar, maybe even Chad's less. going to be here tomorrow. Yeah, so. maybe I'll talk to Chad. The other thing I was going to ask you, Paul, before we, we end this is, do you ever, you do giveaways once in a while. Yeah, things. I okay. love giveaways. So I'll send some of my uh, Signs of the Times, nooffseason.com. 2023 national collab shirts with you. That'd be great. That you can give we'll out. We'll put to them some in the premium packs. Come. They'll go in the premium awesome. pack. So you, if you're a member, premium member of nooffseason.com, and you renew past your free trial period, you immediately get a premium pack. They're going to basically be all of the value, all of the monetary value of the subscription anyway. And now they'll most likely have a limited edition. Well, they could have a limited edition 
national collab shirt. I only made 100, so they are limited. Limited edition, yeah. everybody. All right, cool. Thanks, Tim. We appreciate that. Yeah. I'm excited to be here all week with you. You're the man. You are the only main man now. I'm going to have yeah. to stop calling my Lefty and Chad the main I'm man. I'm going to go home and tell my wife, I am the man, and she's going to say, all what? You're, all you're going to have to do is text your wife a link to this episode and just say, just take out 47 minutes of your day. You know what? Listen to it on double speed if you need to. But Paul <laughs> says I'm the man. Sounds good. Well, it's been good, really good, getting to know you better in person. I know we've had some good conversations the last couple of months, but I'm glad this worked out really well. Uh, it's going to be loads of fun. I'm looking forward to meeting some of your your listeners. There's um, going to be a lot of listeners here. Unfortunately, Baruski and Shoes are not going to be able to make it. Brian Steeler 714 word on the street is that he's going to be in the house. Uh, Duke Denny One Time Dotson from Graybos and his whole crew. Andy Kaysen from the Football Card Quest is bringing like seven people. Um, so Andy's bringing the crew. Look forward to that. The list goes on and on. And uh, for those of you who can't make it, don't worry. We'll be doing more content from the National. Thanks again to Tim Larson of Signs of the Times. My Collectibles, pleasure. Man. Everybody have a great day. Thanks for watching and listening to this special edition of the Sports Card Strategy Show and Tell. JMO, we're coming back over to help you out, brother. Don't worry about it.